we have a deeper control over the extrusion, the edge, and the, the main surface through a different control property set. And that's going to be found under our window properties, and it's called surfaces. Surfaces has all three individual surfaces for an object. It has its main surface, it has its edge, and it has its extrusion. And you can see that drop down right here, where you can pick the edge controls, and you can pick the extrusion. In this case, the extrusion isn't enabled at all. On my shape here, I'm going to go ahead and enable the extrusion, which is now white, and I can pick a different color or just say to enable lighting, and it goes back to where it started. These three items here, the main edge and extrusion, all can have three different types of surfaces. They can have a sol solid color that we've seen, they can have a gradient, but they can also have a texture. And the neat thing of texture is when you first choose it, it's going to say missing texture. We can pull the texture from the textures tab or anything we import. I'm going to take the avid textures and I can take something like, oh, I don't know, the oak board. And I can either drag it here or I can drag it directly to the object. Now I'm going to drag it to the surfaces pane and I'm going to color the, I'm going to texture the front with oak board. You can see it show up. It's not real visible because of the lighting. So let's just go ahead here and let's just rotate that back so it's facing the lights a little bit better. We can see that oak board. Let's pick, for example, granite or gold wave or giraffe fur. Now we're doing all of this, of course, for the main surface. I'm going to rotate this again. And here we can go ahead and see what the extrusion, the extrusion is always a little bit funny because it'll distort shapes. And I'm going to drag to the edge of it. Let's see if that works. Nope, it did the front, so I'm going to undo that. I have to do that up here, peanuts right there. And it becomes the edge of this for the extrusion. And you can do the same for the edge. I'm going to go here and say edge and maybe pick pennies for the edge. It'll be hard for us to see the pennies, but they'll be there. And those are the three major surfaces you have. Now I'm rotating this object indirectly. There's a direct way to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and close my surfaces properties for this. There's a tool here, it's called the rotate tool. That's R for rotate. The way the rotate tool works is with its, any object selected, we get equators, sort of like a world around it. I think I'm gonna do it for the text first so you can see the equators a little bit better. Now let's do the object. We have an X, Y, and Z. This is gonna be the X, the yellow one. The blue one is gonna be Y, and the green one's gonna be Z. The real trick with it is that you don't wanna grab at the cross points. If you see an up arrow, that's the wrong spot to grab. If you see a four-way moving arrow, this is how you can go ahead and rotate an item. I'm gonna rotate it this way. I'm gonna rotate it this way. I'm gonna do the same with our text in a moment. I'm gonna take my text. I'm gonna grab and rotate. This is a X rotation, that's yellow. This is gonna be a Y rotation here in blue. It's gonna revolve around. And the outside green is a Z rotation. Now the problem with this, of course, is that there's nothing I'm able to do with my text that makes it intersect with my box. For that, I need to change the layer. And that's the big trick with this, is that if I right click and I change the layer type from 2D to 3D, objects now intersect. It's this little simple thing. And now the box physically transforms through the text. If I go to rotate the box, it rotates through the text itself. If I grab the text, it rotates through the box. So if you want your objects in 3D to interact, the other thing you need to do, besides knowing about the rotate and the extrusion, is you need to know about right-clicking here and changing the layer type from 2D to 3D.